a Washington Post article titled Israel's feeling of isolation is becoming more pronounced captured the mood in Israel well. And an article in Billboard, the leading music industry publication, also highlighted the growing controversy surrounding performing in Israel in light of the Flotilla attack. In the weeks and months before the Flotilla attack, artists of the caliber of Elvis Costello, Gil Scott Heron, and Carlos Santana all cancelled scheduled performances in Israel, after receiving appeals from Palestinian and international BDS groups. Increasingly, Tel Aviv is being compared to the South African resort, Sunstie, which was boycotted by world artists during apartheid. An artist who performs in Israel today is viewed, by Palestinians and supporters of just peace around the world, just like those who violated the boycott against apartheid South Africa, as butting personal gain ahead of moral principles. Israel, attempts to lure international performers as part of its brand Israel campaign, which by design hides its violations of human rights and international law under a deceptive guise of artistic and scientific glamour. Despite the promise of lucrative remuneration, many top artists refuse to perform in Israel. The Forward, the leading Jewish daily in New York, cites a music insider saying that in recent months he had approached more than 15 performing artists with proposals to give concerts in Israel. None had agreed. The contracts offered high levels of compensation. He called them extreme, big numbers that could match any other gig. Many cultural figures, well before the flotilla attack, explicitly supported the Palestinian cultural boycott of Israel. A statement by 500 artists against apartheid in Montreal is the latest, perhaps most impressive, of these efforts. Earlier, in 2006, the famous British author and artist, John Berger, issued a statement explicitly endorsing the cultural boycott of Israel, collecting 93 endorsements from prominent writers and artists. Intellectuals and artists who have endorsed BDS include Ken Loach, Judith Butler, Naomi Klein, The Yes Men, Sarah Shulman, Ahiran Shabtai, Yudi Aloni, Adrian Rich, John Williams, and Aaron Darty Roy, among others. Some cultural figures have refused to participate in Israel's official celebrations and festivals without explicitly adopting the boycott. In 2008, for instance, countering Israel's 60th anniversary celebrations, PACB collected tens of signatures of prominent artists and authors for a half-page advertisement that was published in the International Herald Tribune. The list included luminaries like Mahmoud Darwish. Augusto Ball, Roger Waters, Andre Brink, Vincenzo Consolo, and Nigel Kennedy. Some of the signatories on that at later adopted the boycott explicitly. A third category is of artists who accept to play Israel, and then cancel after being approached by PACB and its partners around the world, including the Israeli group, Boycott From Within, which plays a significant role in convincing performers to stay away from Israel due to its violation of Palestinian rights. This category includes Bernou, Bjork, Jean-Luc Godard, Snoop Dogg, and others. Whether in culture, academia, business, or mirror image, Israel is feeling the heat like never before. A fast-spreading BDS campaign has caused fury in Israel, prompting 25 members of Neset, including from ruling and opposition parties, to put forth a bill that would criminalize advocating, justifying, or support the boycott by Palestinians, Israelis, and internationals alike. This latest sign of desperation, more than anything else, proves that Israel fears the global reach and effectiveness of a morally consistent, well-argued, civil, non-violent campaign of resistance especially one based on international law and universal human rights in besieging its siege occupation, and apartheid. In many ways, it confirms the analysis that the South Africa moment has arrived for Palestine. See notes and text.